So the first thing I want to do is set the bead. Uh, it's just easier for me to set the bead. We have the valve installed, the tire on there, everything's taped up. So I just want to blast some air in there. You have the bead set in the inner channel. Yep. And then it'll expand pop. out. Ah, we should okay. hear some, some pops and cracks. Uh, that's just the, the bead getting set. Maybe not. All right, good. All right, so. It looks like I don't see any issues right off the bat, so I think this will set up. What would be an well. issue, like a uh, like Some a bubble or a... audible leaking? Um, anything that would be like I would be able to hear it. The bead hasn't set yet, but it's getting close to it, so you can see where the this bead's starting to work its way into position. Mm -hmm. you can see that kind of. Migrating out. Yeah. We'll just put a little more air in there. There we go. Yeah. So these, you're probably putting, what, 50, 60 pounds of air in this? Right like now, it's yeah. probably closer. My guess is that's closer to 45, 50 ish. Okay. Because I'm going to run these in the high 20s, mid 30s, something like that. Nice. Depending I'm going to let the air out, it's going to blow out a little bit. And then while we have the valve out, I'm gonna put some sealant in. Uh -huh. Just directly through the valve hole. Oh, okay. This cuts down mess. Yeah, shoot, that's genius. I didn't come up with that, but I'll take credit. Did you have a special tool to remove the Presta or are you just on? Yes, okay. there's, a, there's a small tool, comes with your, your valves. Ah, doesn't come okay. with every valve, but it came with these valves. Okay. You can get a more substantial tool from uh, Park Tool makes one. I've always seen that everybody just kind of pulls the tire, flips the tire out. Yeah. You know, and like like down here, there's like a little cup, and you just kind of lead it out, and then put then spray it in there. Way more efficient oh, this way. Yeah, I like that. And then this is the tool. It's it's very tiny. Yeah. But it just kind of keys up with the um, with the valve, and okay. then we're in. And now we can just add some. Uh, some regular air pressure to it, and I will um, probably take this up to about 40 psi, mm -hmm. uh, just so that thing settle into place with it. And we let it sit at 40 for a while, or yep. And then my first ride, just go and adjust, or just, yeah, let it down uh, once you're once you go to ride. What do you typically recommend as a loose? Pressure. Your body weight, your ride with uh, ride apparel and everything, divided by seven. So is a good. 240 divided by seven, whatever that is. It's mathing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so typically body weight divided by That's seven is gonna will be give you 32 a pounds roughly, something like that. Nice, yeah. 31 think, and a half pounds. And then uh, you can go from there. So your tires are gonna be part of your suspension system. Yeah. So. I typically like to tell people to, um, as you ride, you can hit the, uh, you can feel the tire collapse and hit the rim maybe once per lap. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you hit the rim or bottom out your tire more than that, that's problematic. But uh, you can use all that suspension. Just kind of try to. I don't foresee any issue with the seal. Yeah, but I mean, for here. me to bottom out, I'm gonna have to drop. 10 feet, you know, on this thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's with the tire, if you have your, like, if you're supposed to be riding it at 32 and you're a heavier rider, yeah. and then you um, you drop it down to 25, you may bottom out that tire and, um, a little more easily. Yeah. But experiment with it. Tire pressure is, tire pressure is always an interesting. Um, it's a subjective thing to some extent. Yep. Absolutely. I tend to ride higher because I'm usually riding flat. Understood. A lot of times I'll ride, you know, 36, 38 because I'm on the road. Okay. Side of the road, you know. Okay. Are you tubed up now or do you have... Um... You tube, yeah. Okay. Tube. So I'll run lower pressures than I normally would with a tube with a tubeless, correct? Yes. Yeah. So that's some of the benefit is you're eliminating the risk of pinch flatting. You can still get a puncture in your... Uh, through your tire, you pick up like a piece of glass or a thorn or 
sure. anything like that. Nothing, there's no perfect system. Well, hopefully the sealant, if it's a small little puncture, then the yep. sealant will get it and then you can fix it later. But if Absolutely. you slice a hole in the tire, you know, you're you can You can use a tire plug system sometimes if you're out in the middle of of the wild. So I should be carrying like a patch, an inner, an inner patch type. You should carry a spare tube. Um, oh, okay. And uh, a CO2 inflator, maybe a, a pocket pump. Yeah, I have, um, a, I have a Crank Brothers pocket pump. Nice. And then um, you can get some tubeless uh, plug kits that are available for your uh, for that uh, for that type of riding. It's a pretty. There's like three brands that lead the industry there right now. Uh, Dynaplug is a, is a really great one. Do you guys have that stuff here? Lasign. We carry the Lasign ones here. Okay. Um, Jesse, <laughs> you like it, don't you? I like Lasign. That's a, it's a company that I that I enjoy. Genuine Innovations makes one as well. Okay. Just a little put thing you put in your pack. Absolutely. Have it with you. In case of emergency. I've only had to use it once on a gravel ride, and I was grateful to have it. That's interesting. I would have thought you'd be setting this up on this side, on the edge. You so, want to set it up in the middle of the channel, the edge of the channel there? That gives us the, the easiest uh, chance at manipulating the tire because it, it's a, a smaller diameter. Uh -huh. when we go into the channel. And so okay. I can then rotate this tire into a, into a better position for the, OC, the OCD side. So I like to have the, typically the, the tire size um, settle on the drive side at the, at the valve. Okay. Um, it's just a good way for us to reference. So when you want to know how much air pressure to put in, what size tire you have, you just go right to the valve and uh -huh. take a look. Hey, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I see. I like that. And then, you're speaking my language there. <laughs> I'm a D-nibber. You know, like the little little nibs on your tires in your car? Yeah, that's uh -huh. you. You're I, all I, over I, that? I clip them all off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice, yeah. You know, um, you know, you're going to do that from now on on your car. You know, you're going to have to <laughs> D-nib it every time. It makes it so your tire dressing, it's just a smoother surface. I like that. You hear that? I, I don't know if I, I might not go that far myself. And yeah, this one I'm going to try to see with just the, the air hose. Um, might actually work a little bit more efficiently. Yeah. This would be really hard to do with a pump, a bike pump. Um, Potentially, but maybe not. Yeah, you might have, you might do a little bit more work with it, but you're having to pump real, like real hard and fast. Is that the idea? Of trying yeah. to get it to. You can get, you can get pumps that do the job for you as well. Um, yeah, well, they'll store. They basically store up energy and then. Exactly. Yeah. The other cheater move that you can do is, and I'm just gonna let this air out. You can use a CO2 cartridge and oh, inflator. Yeah. I yeah. just pop that canister right into the middle of it. And then we'll remove that valve. You can use uh, pliers for this, like a needle nose pliers if you had, if you were in a jam. In my saddlebag, I keep a folding pair of uh, needle nose pliers to just grab the flats of that. Uh, comes so in handy it, occasionally. It, it, you pull it or you, it's threaded, the it's threaded, threaded part. Okay. Yeah. You just need something to pinch. You, and so you can get it started. Turning. Exactly. There are wrench I flats see. on the side of it, and they key up with. I see. Yeah, that's gonna this. be hard for you guys to. And then this is the tool. That's the tool. So, what were you saying? So, how am I maintaining this sealant then? You said it'll congeal. So in six weeks. So what am I gonna it, do? You wanna you'll. You wanna make sure it stays fluid. Um, so how, I, so how do I check that? You'll be able to hear the sealant rolling around in there. Okay. So with this one, it might be a little too loud in here, but when things are quiet, you can yeah. typically hear the fluid moving through the tire. Okay. If you, when you don't hear that anymore, you can, A, you can put new sealant in, or B, you can take the entire tire off, pull the old sealant out, It'll uh -huh. it's latex, right? So just like paint, it'll uh -huh. dry in there. Okay. Um, but if you keep refreshing it, it should stay pretty fluid for you. Is it water soluble or do you need some kind of... You just, 
if it's dry on the inside of the tire, it'll coat that tire. You just peel it off. Oh, okay. Just like uh, just like uh, like liquid latex. Got it. It's basically what this is. It's just latex-based uh, tire sealant. Okay, so you don't need any degreaser or anything to get in there and scrub it, or you don't mm -hmm. have to throw your tire away. Nope. Okay. Now, you can do. So if I don't, don't hear it rolling around, that means I'm going to need to. Absolutely. Yeah. And sealant is something that. Um, People forget a lot. I just don't want to knock that over. They forget that it exists. They forget that they have to check it, um, and then they, it gets neglected. It uh, this sealant will uh, stain clothing. Okay. So just want to be cautious um, with it. There's softer sealants out there, or sealants that uh, are less caustic. Mm -hmm. This sealant works really well brand is this? This is Stans. And this came with the bike, came in the box. See, I really started this YouTube channel just as an excuse to be able to come in the back. Nice. <laughs> you know, there's nothing worse than going, like, I go get my tires installed. I don't want to sit in the waiting room. I want to go hold, I'll hold the wheel for you, you know? Nice. I want to be the assistant. You want to Vanna White it. I got yeah. it. I got it. Well, sometimes I'll get a little dirty, but, but then when it's time for me to do it, then I know how because I watched it. That's why when I'm, when I'm in the presence of an expert, I always want to just let them do it, and then I'll practice on my own. Understood. I just have, you know, my my way of learning is to watch, and then I can use that. I'll draw on that later. So I, I don't like when I go somewhere and you're doing this. I don't want to do it. I want you to do it because I'm, I want to maximize my time with you know the person that's doing the work, and I'll pick up on cues like little things that you do that. I may have never have thought of just little tricks and things like that. But. Understood. And it also helps that I'll go edit the video and I wash it back again. You know. Nice. I'll grab that before it drops. So we're putting the uh, rotor on. So just kind of loosely, just with you know finger tight there. So these are SRAM. Uh, these are yeah. These are SRAM uh, centerline rotors. The concept here is that. When, you, when the brake squeezes, you're always grabbing rotor. When they were slotted, like the older clean sweeps, mm -hmm. you would have the, the pads would grab a rotor and it would hit a pocket of air uh, mm -hmm. or a gap in the rotor. So you would on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And this is a constant sliding. Hmm. Um, and, and these are scallops. directional. Yes. And this is the front. This is the front, yep. And they have Loctite already pre-installed on the... Exactly, exactly. And these torque, uh, these bolts should be uh, torqued 6.2 Newtons. I've noticed um, on, on these type of precision bikes, you're doing mainly hand tools. Yes. Not electrics and yeah. cheating. I could use, uh, I could use a, um, a a drill, but we're gonna go back and check everything with torque, and so you might as well just it's easier to make a mistake uh, with a power tool than it is for me to make a mistake with a hand tool. Especially when you're dealing with carbon and these lightweight things, if you over torque, you if you over torque or you cross a thread, yeah, that's uh, that can really mess up your day. Uh, when I set these things in here. These bolts, mm -hmm. it's, it's easier to reverse, and then you know you get you'll ensure that with just with your fingertips you just back it up and start to thread it on slowly, and you'll I, you get a clean start to that bolt, and is then that, it becomes that hub is carbon. Um, it's probably mm -hmm. it's threading into an alloy uh, yeah, or an aluminum, yeah. but I'm not entirely sure if the hub is carbon or not. It feels aluminum. Yeah. Looks like it feels like an aluminum hub. All right, I'm gonna grab a torque wrench and finish that up. If I wasn't bothering you here, start to finish to build this bike, what do you think it would take time-wise? I would, uh, if I was scheduling out a build like this, I would allocate approximately three hours of build time for it mm -hmm. um, in our schedule for the day, and then you know, maybe anticipating 
phone calls, interruptions, um, throw an extra hour, maybe 30 minutes on either end. It's exciting because it's all the new hotness. Yeah. But you still want to make sure everything goes to plan. So. I'm surprised because I thought like things like this would be installed. You know, when you buy a $1,200 Trek or whatever, then all this stuff is already on the bike. Yes. Boom. Uh, is that so. nylon? Was that nylon? No, it's aluminum. Oh. That's aluminum. If you want a better look at the hub, mm -hmm. the hub is, so you can see it's machined um, on the sides. Yep. And then aluminum thread, the hub itself. Really nice. So how do you know which tire is the front and which is the rear? So the front will have a little bit more aggressive uh, center tread, and it's ramped. Okay. Uh, and what that does, it'll, it, this is all your, all your front end weight if, regarding steering ends up on that. Mm -hmm. um, so we build confidence in cornering, and um, or it, you want to have slight, a slightly, some people would want to have a slightly wider tire up front. The back, is a little bit more blunt in its uh, leading edge. And it's a shorter, typically it nice. on this one it's a shorter knob. I see that. Uh, and this just allows it to maybe accelerate or even climbing. So this will this surface will grab first and, and help with climbing mm -hmm. a little bit. You may not notice a whole bunch down here in South Florida or Central Florida, but this is a, that's a, the concept or the premise behind that, that tire. Both are directional. Yes. Typically, um, it's easy to identify which direction. So the drive side of the tire will have the labels on it. Um, and then when you set it up, you can set it up drive side, align it with the labels. The back side of the tire won't have the tire size or model on there. Hmm. Um, I'd be sitting there for hours trying to bend my brain on which side, which way is to go, which way is which. Sometimes there are arrows as well. Yeah. Um, this one might have an indicator uh, on the tire. There are definitely arrows. Uh, when it comes to bikes, um, you can typically indicate on one side. Mm -hmm. So this has the torque uh, spec on here, the brand, the size, the directional arrow. Um, serial number or the date code, the production code. On the back side of it, it's nothing. Mm, so, so this is the side we're gonna be seeing visually. Yeah, okay. Yeah, then we know that side's gotta go up. The same spec, same setup as the uh, front. Uh, yes, a little bit smaller rotor size for the, for the rear. Just like a car. Yeah. The bolts, the hardware will be the same. You can run a um, you can run the same size rotor. I use a 160 rotor on both the front and the rear on my bike. These rotors replacement. How do you know when to replace them? That's a fantastic question. Right. So aside from contamination, um, I would typically say if you go through pads, you should replace your rotors at the same time. Okay. They're not like cars, where in like a car's an automotive rotor, you can cut it. Um, you can't do that with, with, uh, with these. You can, you'll see some discoloration, some, um, you might see some lines or some grooving in them. They're just, they get, when they're shot, they're shot. There's, if they're terribly mangled or bent, replace them. But uh, I, I would say replace them every time you replace your pads. That's the safest bet. That's probably the, by the book rule. I'm sure lots of people replace them uh, after a couple sets of pads as well. Mm -hmm. But um, these suckers are 100 bucks, something like that? No, uh, maybe maybe for the pair. Okay. And depending on size, I would say they range anywhere from $45 a rotor all the way up through maybe $60 a rotor. Uh, That's not bad. For, for something like-minded, you can get two-piece rotors that will cost more, and they'll have um, a spider that uh, the rotor actually mounts to, and, and that the idea there is that you have a stiffer rotor. You can get some rotors with cooling fins on there, 
they look rad. Uh, but I tend to gravitate right back towards the centerline rotors. Mm -hmm. uh, these have been, since they developed the centerline design, this has been my go-to rotor. These are SRAM built. That's correct. You're torquing just like uh, wheels on a car in a star pattern. Yes. Alternating. And then just double check them. It's always good practice to go back and double check. Sometimes. Uh, Miss one, yeah. You, well, when you torque one down, it could potentially um, change the torque value on another one. So you just want to make sure you're. All right. All right. Wheels are. Oh, now you got to do the. Uh, the ca the um, cassette. Yes. This one's what I'm fired up about. It's a uh, kind of bronze looking fancy. Holy smokes. Oh, yeah. Does that That's do it legit. justice? Yes, Ooh. it does. Here, I'm going to let you hang on to that. I'm going to grab some tools. Sick. That's insane. I need... And of course, I got my finger in the antices. Always get antices on me. Look at that thing. That thing is amazing. So the key with the installation on this is that it has to key up on the backside. It's notched. Ah, okay. And then that, that keys up. It's, yep. not a, it's not like a traditional cassette where you would have um, a timing placement on there. Mm -hmm. But you do want to make sure at this point that you feel it key into place so that mm -hmm. way you're engaging that uh, driver body mm -hmm. and then uh, come back and tighten it up. Otherwise you risk pulling the thread. So that's a tool you're putting in there? Yes. Uh, that not that is not a permanent. No, although that doesn't feel interesting. Like it wants to so grab it. So this will press it into place. It'll thread it. It'll it's gonna engage it and thread it down into um, or onto the. So this is notched here as uh, well, yeah, and that keys up, and that will turn that cassette um, onto. The driver body is threaded to it's threaded on the back side. Oh, that felt really tough, and they're typically not that hard to to get started. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of encouragement. For this, I am gonna just do a quick check on the torque value before I finish in the, that installation. So. so what's our torque spec? You said 50 Newton meters? 40. 40? Up. I'm going to move the wheels out of the way. The wheels are done. Wheels are done. No reflectors on these wheels to take off, huh? <laughs> Negative. We are going to move them out of the way um, because we're going to start to work with, uh, with brakes eventually. We're going to put this fork on, do the brakes, and I don't want to risk contaminating the wheels, yep. uh, the, the rotors. Got so, it. sealant in bulk, mm -hmm. and then just refill this uh, from your bulk container, oh, okay. and then just pull the valve core out, and then squeeze it right in, and then you just save this for the next, as your applicator, mm, yeah. pretty much. Uh, so I'll put this aside for you along with your valve core tools.